Well, 18 months after his horrific accident on the FCC TSR Honda at Suzuka, which almost cost him his life, Gino Rea returns to racing at Le Mans for the 24 hours. The opening round at the EWC for this first race in his comeback. Gino will be racing for the Wojciech team. This is the team of which he discovered endurance racing after a long career in Grand Prix and Superbike. At 34, Gino is back. First, the first time back. Not bad, not bad. Still quite good myself, but just the confidence in the bike. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to, after the crash the other day, I don't want to crash it again. No, no. Just want to start out like smoothly. Oh, so yeah. It's all right. On the last thing, I was three in sectors. Of the yeah, I saw it too. Yeah. So at least the pace is yeah, yeah. similar to them. Yeah, okay. On the Tuesday test here, we are struggling a little bit with the bike, and Danny and then me, we had a very similar crash. And it's never good to crash, but at the same time, it's good to get the first crash out of the way and try to move on. In August 2022 at the Suzuka circuit, Gina Rear was involved in a very big accident. The scary thing is I don't remember maybe three to four months of my life. I don't remember the race week. I don't remember being in the circuit, riding in the practice. It wasn't a very bad crash, it, but the corner I crashed on, I slid and I hit the wall. Almost a miracle, <laughs> but he's worked hard, really hard the last two years, get himself back together, fitness, mentally. I've never been afraid to see Gino on a bike, as I always think he's very safe. He just seems to love, love bikes. Now we've got to go to the top again. I was put into a coma. I had some damage to the brain, swelling inside the brain. I was in Japan for five weeks, six weeks, in intensive care, waking up from the coma. I flew back to London to be in the rehab hospital. I remember that every day we was going for walk-in uh, sessions and I was with my dad or wife and the doctors. I remember walking with my dad and saying to my dad, what are we doing? Why are we walking around here? He said, oh, it's part of your rehab. And I said, why? What do you mean, my rehab? He said, yeah, from your crash. And I said, Dad, I've crashed hundreds of times in my life. Like, what do you mean? He said, oh, you're a bad crash. And then, then I was like, what, I'm in rehab from a crash? And he said, yeah, you was in a serious accident in Japan. And then he told me basically what happened. And that is one of my first moments of, of memories. Well, from the hospital bed to getting him back up on his feet again, you could from see the, he wanted uh, to go again. Bed, to get to him, started walking again. I think I could see that he, he wanted to go again. He wanted to finish what he started. Repair process was very long and very slow. In my opinion, it was slow, but in the doctor's opinions, they said that I'm the first person they've seen, and this is the brain specialist told me this, I'm the first person they've seen that's recovered from that type of injury. Everyone else has gone in depression, is stayed in hospital, cannot move and, and very bad things. So the process was very long. And at the start, I was doing many types of exercises for coordination to get the brain working, eye exercises, because all that, the front part of the brain was damaged and it affects the whole area. But yeah, I was doing games like puzzles, all different types of things and even general life lessons, it was like being a kid again and learning how to live, learning how to treat people, learning how to act. And sometimes you, you do something and then five minutes after you think, why did I do that? And then you learn from your mistakes. And it's something that happens in your life in general, when you're growing up, you learn from your mistakes. But this time it's like, when I learn from it, when I realize what I did, I'm asking myself, hold on. I knew that 20 years ago. I, I learned that part of living, that behavior when I was young, but it's now I'm learning it again. And I'm very fortunate that 
I've gone through that process and I'm now uh, maybe 90%, 95% recovered. I don't think I'm 100%, but I'm, I'm getting there. I, I can't give an exact time when I started to think about bikes again, but it never leaves the mind. If the mind is functioning, I know how I crashed. I know that I was part of the Endurance World Championship team. I know that I was racing in my... I know the history, you know, I didn't forget that part. And, yeah, it's just, it's in the mind, naturally. You start thinking about it, and then when I first did it, when I first got back in, in my levers and I got on the bike, I was, I think, a little bit nervous, but I think intrigued is the best way to describe it. It's intrigued to see if I remembered what to do on track. And I touched my knee both sides on my first lap. <laughs> so that was like, okay, I'm happy now. And I know kind of what to do. The only part of me that doesn't want to race again is the part of me that doesn't want to put my family, my wife, through the pain. I went to sleep and I woke up six months later. And yeah, I wasn't the same when I woke up, but that was almost the experience. Whereas my wife and then my family, they saw me in a coma. They went through the pain of knowing, is he gonna wake up? Is he gonna remember us? Is he gonna be able to speak? Is he gonna be able to think? They didn't know what was gonna happen to me. So they're the ones that had the pain. And that is the only part of me that is not regretful, but that's the only thing about racing again that I'm scared of. <laughs>